the French citizens are in long lines, waiting as long as 12 hours to get a tank full of fuel. Karma is a witch and a devil. This is the same France that has been collecting for the last hundred years and is still collecting over 500 billion US dollars every year out of those poor, starving African nations they once ruled. Today, they are getting a dose of their own medicine, having to line up for things they once thief and still continue to thief. Yes, the people gold, diamond and oil from those poor, poor nations. I smile watching the news out of Europe every day. One of the main objectives of the protest is to get the government uncle, yes, to get the government auntie to slap on additional taxes on ExxonMobil and Total Energies. You hear me? One of the main reasons for that protest in France, they are calling on the government to slap on taxes on the oil companies, including ExxonMobil and Total Energies. The protesters said oil prices are sky high and oil companies' profits are going up to the moon while they are feeling the squeeze and the pain. You hear me, auntie? You guys listening carefully? They want their government to tax the oil companies that are making trillions so it can bring down the cost of living and the cost of fuel. The U.S. raised their royalty rates a few months ago. From 18.5%, Canada raised their royalty rates on a sliding scale to up to 40%. England slap on more taxes on the enormous profits the oil company is making in the UK. Now France, the next door neighbor to England, just like Suriname and Guyana, the people are protesting and pressing the government to do the same what England, the US, and Canada did. All to bring down the unbearable cost of living in France. What's happening in Guyana? This beautiful country we have with intelligent and smart leaders. And of course, you, the people, what happened? Any protests anywhere? Glenn Lal have to take the government. I have to take the government to court to get ExxonMobil to pay taxes on we oil. I didn't take them to court to get an increase in taxes, you know. Listen to me carefully. We getting, we ain't getting any taxes. Not a blind cent. I take them to court to get the taxes and not to increase any taxes. Just to get our taxes. So let me ask you guys. Is when this countrywide protest can start so that the Guyanese people can have a good life? Or are you guys waiting to line up 9 and 12 hours a day for a couple gallon of gasoline or diesel in a bottle? Or are you guys waiting to see when you have to line up to get a bottle cooking gas? I'm just asking. These filthy rich countries in North America and Europe are increasing the taxes on what they are already collecting. Guyana, on the other hand, 
collecting zero taxes from the four oil, oil projects and not making a move to correct it. Instead, they are racing ahead to approve bigger projects. <laughs> yes, the fifth one. With still no taxes to come. Saturday morning, I was standing on the East Bank Public Road. And a gentleman, a total stranger, walked up to me and shake my hands. He said, Glenn, I just came out of a minibus heading to town to tell you something. You hear me? Hmm. He come out of a minibus to tell me something after spotted me standing on the roadside. He tell me, he said, please, please, I listen to all your programs and I am begging you, don't call the politicians clowns. He said, you can call them thieves and incompetent because that's who they are. But please don't call them clowns. After a few minutes conversation with the gentleman, I promised I will take his advice. Thank you, sir. Every country raising their taxes, trying to get more for their people. Every one of them. Our leaders taking loans and paying interest to approve more oil projects so the oil companies can make more, more money of our wealth. Is this, is this competence or incompetence? Or is it a premeditated crime against all of us? Mr. John, the gentleman named Mr. John that came out of the bus. Like I promised, Mr. John, no more clowns, and I am keeping my word. Let me ask this. If what has happened here happened in France, the US, UK, or Canada, what do you think the citizens of those countries would have done? If they are getting 20% plus in royalties, plus taxes and protesting for more taxes. Mr. John, what you think they would have done with a 2% royalty and no taxes, with no ring fencing, no full protection from, the oil, from an oil spill, no checking of billions in expenses, and more projects in the billions of U.S. dollars are lining up for approval. Can you answer the question, Mr. John? Can somebody help me? You have a choice, John. We all have a choice. I can only turn on the switch for you guys. Yes, continue to live with what you have what you're getting by saying nothing and doing nothing or open your mouths and speak. Continue that way. You will end up like Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka allow their ex-president Rajapaksha to pawn, to pawn away a big chunk of the country to the Chinese. And run the entire country into bankruptcy. While he was enriching himself. His two brothers. Along with his nephews. And a few close friends. Today. No fuel. No food. No fertilizer. No medicine. And huge debts. The Sri Lankan people have to pay. With no hope in sight. Is this what you guys want? Well, 
That is where we are heading. Continue allowing the Vice President Jardel to approve more and more projects. Today, today, Kaicho News lead story. The headline, Government Approving More Oil Projects to the Detriment of Guyana. That was the headline. It's not Glenn Lal saying that. Is the ex-public works minister, David Patterson. He went on further to say that we don't have the kind of skills and export people needed to supervise the projects we have presently, uncle. And we are going to approve more and more projects. <laughs> Patterson said that will expose Guyana to more hardships. And I fully agree and accept that. I've been preaching this all the time. One of the dangers he spoke about was the EPA, our Environmental Protection Agency, doesn't have the kind of people to police the oil business and our environment. And we go in and approve more and more projects. Another organization, Red Thread, said yesterday, in yesterday's newspaper, we carry that story, that they will not sit back and allow greedy foreigners to enrich themselves in our land with our wealth, while starving us and endangering our beautiful country. They said those words at a protest in front of the EPA headquarters two days ago. You guys must come out and join them. Had I known before, I would have been there with them too. Let me repeat this again. Three things oil companies do when they come and find oil in your country. Put money in the politician's bank book. Yes, that's what they do. Or their hands. With scotch tape their mouths. That's the first thing they do. Then they create chaos in your country. Confusion. And division. And while we fight among ourselves. Yes. They steal and fetch away everything they can put hands on. You hear the three things? They come, they corrupt your, your, your politicians. They create chaos and confusion. And they tour while we fight. They fetch out everything. They are worse than scavengers. Yes, these oil companies. They will eat up their own dead if given a chance. Exxon Mobil is one of them. They have, be, they have been found guilty of defrauding every oil country they operate and worked in. Including their own country, America, uncle. Yes. The United States Labor Department. Listen this carefully. The United States Labor Department, just last week, ordered them... To reinstate two scientists, they fired for exposing the company's misinformation on production data and cost of oil wells. Let me repeat. ExxonMobil fired two scientists. They ordered. They ordered. I shouldn't say they ordered. They fired the two scientists for exposing the company information on production data and oil wells. <laughs> the U.S. Labor Department, they didn't stop there when they ordered Exxon to reinstate the two men. They also ordered ExxonMobil to pay the two scientists more than 800,000 American dollars in back pay in back wages. 
plus interest and compensation. We carry that story in yesterday's Kaicho News. In passing the judgment on this matter, Uncle, the Labor Department officers say, and I want to read the exact words about ExxonMobil. Listen, I'm going to read it for you guys. ExxonMobil's actions are unacceptable. And tell Exxon the integrity of the U.S. financial system relies on companies to report their financial conditions and assets accurately. And that whistleblower's protection is integral to ensuring that the financial disclosure laws work. Hmm. I love that. And as such, they will aggressively protect the rights of employees who raise concerns related to financial improprieties or potential fraud against their shareholders. Fancy languages, uncle. Yes, in one line what I read there, what I read there means the two men ExxonMobil fired was unacceptable and that the U.S. government will go to the end of the earth to protect workers who expose skullduggery that goes on within oil companies like ExxonMobil. That's what I mean with all that fancy language. Auntie, the scientists were ordered by ExxonMobil to inflate, jack up the price on production estimates and the value of the oil and gas wells. And when the men refused to carry out the illegal order and expose this in the media, they were sent packing. They were fired by ExxonMobil. You guys hear that? You hear what I said there just now? The two men were ordered to inflate the value of oil production data and oil wells. <laughs> wow. This jack up pricing and false information on production data. Uncle and Auntie didn't happen in Africa. Eh -eh. It didn't happen in Asia or any third world countries, uncle. That story there happened right in America. In Texas, to be exact, where ExxonMobil Exxon headquarters is located. <laughs> oh, oh, Papa. Oh. If ExxonMobil can do that to their own people in their own country, we have all kinds of regulations with world-class experts and advanced technology in the oil and gas business. Just imagine for a moment what they are doing to us out there with our oil production data and them wells, them drilling every hour. <laughs> In which Guyana knows nothing and have nothing. No technology, no rule, no system. I shudder to think what they are doing to us in every section of this oil business, uncle. Let me give you guys a quick update. On those four hollow frame I talked about last week. <laughs> you guys remember the hollow frame, right? The steel frame. Today I found out that they are coming from America. Yes, those big frames are coming from America. <laughs> One must he cost $25 million. When we can do it 
for less than one million dollar. Oh gosh, what a terrible situation we find ourselves in. You think for a moment, Auntie, that that steel frame or steel frames. <laughs> Like that, making a Guyana can go to America? Huh? Or you think that the American people would stay quiet and allow that coming from any part of the world into their country? Hmm? If something that simple, our leaders don't have a system in place to oversee. Then, what can we do for ourselves? And what is stopping ExxonMobil from continue raping and ripping us off, fooling their country's pocket? Huh? We don't have a clue, a clue as to how much oil being pumped up on a daily basis. And don't tell me that they're putting out a production data online. I am telling you we don't have a clue. Don't bother with a production data. We don't have a clue what ExxonMobil is, being, is pumping on a daily basis. We don't have a clue how much sewage they're dumping in the ocean every hour. How much gas they're flaring out there on a daily basis. We don't know. Till a month later, uncle, what went on? Or how much barrels of oil spill out there the other day? We don't know. And we going to approve more projects, the fifth one. We don't know the cost or how many lengths of, of pipelines they have used out there to date in those four projects. But we are going to give them another one, the fifth one. We don't know how much U.S. billions they have jacked up on those four projects. We don't know what interest rates we have to pay on those billions they borrowed on those four projects. We don't know the cost. Of renting those supply boats on to this day. We don't know the helicopter costs. The drill bits. Cement. Chemicals. We don't know nothing. But them going to approve more projects. We don't know the cost for renting those dr drill ships out there. We don't know the cost for leasing the floating FPSOs. Yes. The big ships that's storing the oil. Yes, we don't know the cost. <laughs> and we are going to approve more projects. <laughs> oh, uncle. Oh. Shouldn't we stop? Put a brakes and get systems, laws, rules, policies, and mechanisms with people in place to learn so that we can get justice from our oil man. Eh? Shouldn't we do that? Approving more and more projects at breakneck speed. Is only committing crimes, uncle. Crimes against us, the Guyanese people. And even a donkey knows that, man. Yes, even a donkey knows that. Because they got long ears. They don't think like human, but they have long ears. I hope Mr. John listening. I ain't call nobody a clown. 
I am saying a donkey would know that, Mr. John. As an example, the man put himself in charge of our future with his trillion dollar oil sector. Yes, he put himself in charge of the, this US trillion dollar oil sector. He himself, listen to this carefully, Mr. John, he himself does not know the precise amount of the total take Guyana is getting out of the oil, out of this oil business. Listen to him. In his own words, as he was talking to me during the radio program, please listen to him carefully. This is an example I am giving you people as to how we have no rules, no systems, no mechanism, <coughs> no policies, and we know nothing. I am giving you an example here now. Could you play that first tape for me, please? We are looking at the spectrum on, on take by different countries. So some countries are on the lower end, and countries like Norway and others, they could get as much as 75% of the total take. Right now, we are getting just over 50% of the total take. So where we move from between 50, 50, 52, 59, whatever you define it as, moving to the, a higher point will be determined by those variables, how we settle those variables. And then through a combination of adjustments on royalty, maybe profit sharing, and the taxes, we will achieve that. Thank you. Hmm. You guys hear him there just now? Royalty may be profit sharing. And that he was talking on, on, other, on other oil blocks he was talking about. But the, the, the core point I want to make, I want you guys to, to remember, was when he was talking about Getting just over 50, 50, 52, or 59%, whatever you define it as. Yes. You hear that? <laughs> whatever you define it as, is me and you talking about. He cannot tell us definitively what is the exact percentage of total take Guyana is getting. Now, uncle, if this intellectual, this financial guru does not know the exact figure Guyana is taking home in a 50-50 partnership, plus the 2% royalty, then who else can know that man? Hmm? Is this man deserving to be there? Y'all see how much trouble we in? Hmm? Could you play it back for me, man? Let the people hear it back. We are looking at the spectrum on, on take by different countries. So some countries are on the lower end, and countries like Norway and others, they could get as much as 75% of the total take. Right now, we are getting just over 50% of the total take. So where we move from between 50, 50, 52, 59, whatever you define it as, moving to the, a higher point. Hmm. You hear him? Right now, we're getting 50 50, 52, 59%, whatever you define it as. <laughs> oh, man, oh. I have a business. 
or you have a business with somebody and you don't know the exact amount of money that you have to get out of the deal, you depending on your neighbor to tell you that, man? Eh? No, man. No, no, no. No, no. Guys, give me a chance to breathe. Let me breathe a little, man. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. I can't believe my ears. Sometimes I can't believe my eyes what I see in this country. Mr. John. Mr. John. The man who tell me not to ever use the word clung when addressing the politicians. But he did say, call those who the cap fit thieves. I really appreciate your counseling, Mr. John. Thank you. Thanks. But I guess you can feel it in my voice. How angry and disgusted I am. How sickening it is to hear our vice president say, Oh, 50, 52. 59% or whatever you want to define it as. Hmm. Mr. John, this is our present and our future that this leader is talking about so carelessly. Like if he's unconcerned about what we get in this land. You heard him. Mr. John, let me tell you this. Jagdale or no Jagdale, Norton or no Norton, Ali or no Ali, will not make Guyana into another Africa once Glen Lal and his staff is breeding. This man doesn't know the exact percentage Guyana receiving and he is approving more and more projects man can you guys believe this thing huh he had promised to come back <coughs> he had promised to come back the next week on my program I figure he busy guess he's trying to slow things down what do you think he also promised to undertake the responsibility to see that the mining contracts. Yes, the mining contracts he promised are made public. A month later, gone. Mr. John, maybe he's even more busy working out the deal for the fifth project. What do you think? Huh? Because I'm still waiting on these things. I'm waiting on the next program. And I'm, we are all waiting on the mining contracts. Hmm. I guess you guys didn't hear what I say just now. Maybe he's busy working out the real deal on the fifth project. Before he gets around to releasing the mining contracts. And the Payara. 9 billion audit report that was supposed to be completed in September last month. And then maybe he will come to the radio. What do you think, Mr. John? I want to take you guys back to the story of the two scientists Exxon Mobil fired. So that you can get a full understanding of what the story is all about and the culture of Exxon Mobil. They were the two men were accused of exposing information about Exxon Mobil, jacking up costs on oil wells and inflating production estimates. Hmm. Uncle and Auntie, we don't drill over 80 wells out there in the Atlantic Ocean. You hear me? 80. 
some fine oil and turn some turn out dry and they're still drilling as I speak here now more and more yes more and more that is what that is what they told the scientists to do remember jack up prices on the well the dog in Texas. <laughs> the dog wells on land in Texas, not in the waters of Texas, but in the ground, Uncle. And if they can do that on ground in Texas to their own country, imagine what they're doing to us with the prices out there. <laughs> Just imagine that. And let me tell you this. In the US, the oil companies, them don't get paid for drill them wells. Them just cooking the books up so that they can cheat on their taxes. <laughs> you know, you know, if you jack up, you know, if you jack up your expenses, you collect less profits. And when you collect less profits, you pay less taxes. <laughs> Here in Guyana, we oil money have to come out to pay every hole them drill. Whether they find it, they find oil or they don't. So you just think for a moment what they're doing to us with those oil wells. <laughs> If they drill or they don't drill, they say they drill and give you a bill. This is profit upon profit upon profit. Ripping off upon ripping off upon ripping off happening in this land, Uncle. 80 wells so far. Yes. Man, CGX, another oil company, drill one and hand us a bill. For over 100 million US. And they're drilling more. Yes. <laughs> CGX. 80 wells Exxon. 80 wells Exxon drill. And if we are to use the figures of CGX of 100 million dollar for one. Is 8 billion US dollars. Have to come out from we oil. To pay back Exxon Mobil. <laughs> Think about this, Uncle. Think about that, Mr. John. Just think about that. If three quarter of that eight billion dollar jack up, <laughs> what becomes a Guyana? And on top of that, on top of that money, that eight billion. Guyana is paying taxes. Sorry, Guyana is paying interest on that jack up money too. <laughs> Man, I think I'm making this thing too simple for y'all. Too simple. You guys have an idea. If 6 billion out of that 8 billion is jacked up, what it means for Guyana? Huh? Is two full year budget for this country. Yes, two full year. Now on two. <laughs> if we are to take six billion plus, plus the interest, Uncle, <laughs> man, every household could have already been getting less than two. To three hundred thousand dollars a month. Salaries and old people pensions could have been tripled already. But instead, our vice president and the rest of the politicians, they're focusing their energies. Instead, they focus their energies on this type of skullduggery and try to stop it, Uncle. They're running around the country, distracting the nation 
with little $25,000 here and there. And telling us about fish cage, black belly shrimp, and they're dancing here and there. Yeah. Approving more and more projects. <laughs> and whenever they're not dancing, uncle, look around where they are. They're in total silence. When last they hold a press conference to talk to you guys about this world class. This world class wealth we have oil. Ask that question. Man, you dig and find plenty gold in my backyard. And we both agree if you find gold, you will take out the money you spend for digging. Which, which I am not supposed to do, uncle. I am not supposed to do that. It's not the normal thing in the gold and oil business. Oil and gold business, uncle, the owners does take their own risk as part of making money. That's their business. But with a kind heart, Guyana decided to tell ExxonMobil and the other oil company, we're going to allow y'all to take out the money y'all spent to find oil. Oh, and down to that we're not checking. We're just accepting bills. We don't even know how much money. And now we don't know how much they take out for, the, for those, those dry holes and wet holes. Uncle, Suriname. Suriname don't pay oil company for exploration costs for drilling, drilling wells. Nothing they don't pay if they're fine or they don't find. That's the oil company risk. <laughs> Man, we don't make that mistake by telling Exxon to tell Exxon to take back the money. Them drill. Why don't we stop it now? And make corrections. So that all those billions that has to come out the oil money can come into our pockets. Hmm? Why don't we stop the projects and fix, correct all these things? You don't have to be a rocket scientist to do that, Mr. John. Especially when you know you're dealing with gangsterism of the highest order. The highest order. Who are ready to rape and rob their own people. And lie to their own governments. With inflated costs. No man. No. These are not people we should do business with uncle. <coughs> These are not people we should give a chance. <coughs> These are not people we should even sit in a room with. Or even share a slice of bread. These are people who are ruthless and heartless. They have no souls within them. They're going to take, they're going to skin you alive. That's who they are. Look what they're doing to their own country. Asking scientists to inflate, inflate costs, just not to pay taxes, <coughs> the rightful share of taxes. Come on, man. You people are too silent in this country. Some of you should watch documentaries on Africa and Asia. Maybe then you guys will wake up. Only then you will wake up. I want to play an interview. An interview done by an American white woman. Yes. She had with an African woman. Wow. Wow. At the end, the reporter asked her, but don't you think that this is over now? She responded, 
over where? Is it over? Who said AIDS came from the monkey? Is it over? Is it over? The reporter then asked, Well, if this is your impression, do you think that you can ever forgive us? Hmm. The African woman responded, It is not a question of forgiveness. I have nothing against you. My point is that you did and you are doing it for your survival. What is necessary? We can't blame you for that. The fact that we didn't do enough for our own survival and we are still not doing enough for our survival, that is not your problem. <laughs> wow. I wonder how many of you really understand those words from that African lady and what she is really telling us today in Guyana. I wonder how much. Whenever I listen to these people, I see the leaders and you people of this country, how corrupt and incompetent the leaders are. And you people are all silent. Yes. All silent. The woman said, We can't blame ExxonMobil for doing what they're doing. They're doing it for their survival. Uncle and auntie, what are you doing for your survival in this country? That is what the woman is saying. Africa become what it is today because her leaders and her people at the time didn't do what they were supposed to do. Hence Africa where it is today. And that's the story unfolding right here before our very eyes. The same way that woman speaks is the same way our children will be speaking to a white reporter 40 years from now. Yes. The exact way she will be speaking. She would say, don't blame Exxon. Exxon came here. Total came here. All the rest, Sinoc and Hess Cooperation came here. Yes, they came here. And did what they had to do for their survival. Our people didn't do what they had to do for our survival. Yes. That's what the woman said. That's what the woman said. I want to tell you guys. President Ali this morning... Let me say again, this morning, addressed the United Nations Food Forum and was begging the United Nations to help Guyana, Suriname, and all the other small Caribbean islands with money to help cushion the impact of climate change on food security. I really don't know who are these people advising and writing these speeches for our president. I really don't know. But I will say this, uncle. They need to go to Africa and Asia and get some wisdom, some understanding of how this world operates. You got ExxonMobil flaring in Lisa 1, 2, just now in 3, 4, 5, and 6, and up to 10 soon. Destroying and damaging our greeneries across this land. Dumping produced water 
by the hundreds of thousands of barrels each and every day into our ocean with deadly chemicals that has already affected the fishing industry. That same chemical water is filtering into our rivers and trenches, destroying our agriculture sector, creating the food crisis we now face. Yes. He is not going after our rightful share, uncle. Yes. He's not going after our rightful share from the oil companies to cushion that. He's allowing the oil companies, them, and the foreigners to eat up our wealth and fetch away everything and in turn begging for help with grants and loans. Yes. Can you guys believe this thing? Hmm? Man, uncle, I have to say God bless you guys again. This is exactly what that African woman just said. We all will become beggars and blame others for our misfortune. I have a tape that I will play part of President Ali's speech this morning to the UN Food Forum. Could you please play it? I am playing a part of it. Thank you very much. I welcome the opportunity to participate in a panel discussion on the Hand in Hand Investment Forum. My country, Guyana, along with Suriname, are low-lying coastal states and are part of the Caribbean community which comprises a majority of small island developing states. Small island developing states and low-lying coastal states face peculiar and inherent challenges to their food security. These challenges relate to their smallness of land resources, the resulting diseconomies of scale, their remoteness from larger markets, susceptibility to external shocks and market vulnerabilities, narrow revenue base, fragile ecosystems, and their vulnerability to climate risk. These climate-related risks include flooding, overtopping of sea defenses, swelling of rivers, flowing extreme uh, precipitation, falling extreme precipitation, drought, erosion, and natural disasters such as landslides and hurricanes. Rising sea levels result in overtopping of sea defenses, an intrusion of salt water into farmlands and irrigation sources. Extreme weather events, including droughts and floods, disrupt food systems and cause destruction to crops and agricultural infrastructure. Critical resources needed to support production often have to be diverted towards climate adaptation. In the face of these challenges, financing for food security, therefore, cannot be delinked from climate financing. But foremost, SIDS and low-lying coastal states require substantial injection of resources for climate adaptation so as to ensure a more resilient sector. Without this investment, food security will remain imperiled in SIDS and low-lying coastal states. I therefore welcome the hand-in-hand -hand initiative launched by the FAO. It is an important platform to help countries source and attract resources for greater food security. Its timing is favorable as the world faces one of its gravest food crises. However, as I have alluded to, SIDS and low-lying coastal states have peculiar and special needs, especially in relation to climate financing and the interlocking food security challenges. Since the low-lying coastal states need climate adaptation financing on soft terms, more grants, concessionary interest rates, and long-term repayment periods. It is my hope, therefore, that the FAO can conceptualize and facilitate the establishment of a special adaptation fund for SIDS and low-lying coastal states. This bars on the basis of vulnerability index rather than on the traditional measures 
relating to gross domestic product. I've also called for a climate vulnerability fund. These will help unlock much needed and specially tailored resources for SIDS and low lying coastal states to help boost their food security. Climate change is too critically interlinked with food production. Climate change is too critically interlinked with the sustainability of the food production system and agriculture as a whole. <laughs> Uncle and Auntie, everything he said eh, is beggy begging for money. Yes, to help cushion the food crisis we face due to climate change. The same, the same climate change were creating the food shortages that this country is part of and not stopping it. Instead, they are proving more projects to create more harm for this country. But everything he said really is beggy begging, uncle. He begging for a little donation or he begging the people to give us grants or, or finance we, help we out with loans, with less interest and on a long term repayments. Yes. Yes. The fastest growing economy on earth, Guyana, leader, is begging for small loans with long term payments. Uncle, with that I say namaste and good night. And good night. You guys have a great evening. God spare life, I see you back Wednesday.